I have one more uh, cherry on the cake, as it were, to deliver to you. Uh, very graciously, uh, Oxford University's Vice Chancellor has come into the latter part of this morning's talks and she has kindly agreed to make a few remarks uh, about our endeavor here today. And I would say that, of course, having any Vice Chancellor clearly means that we have somebody of great accomplishment and significance. But in Louise Richardson's case, she has had a distinguished professional career, very much in the arena of international affairs that we're talking about today. So having her come to talk to us is a special treat. So, Vice Chancellor, where are you? Then? Very good. Good morning. I'm acutely conscious that I'm standing between you and lunch, so I will be brief, but I just couldn't pass up this opportunity to offer you a very warm welcome to Oxford and to wish this conference the very best of success and to say just how much we across the university value the work of Wild Crew. Um, as I was coming over here this morning, I thought those of you unfamiliar with Oxford have had a vintage Oxford experience. Uh, first of all, it's an intelligence test to figure out how on earth do you find this venue. Um, and in order to do so, you have to come through a very ancient set of buildings um, and a very long walk. And then you happen upon this ultra-modern building with this international name in which there's really exciting multidisciplinary work going on. And that really is a metaphor for Oxford. We appear to be quite closed off uh, to the world. But actually, once you get inside, we are a, a very forward-looking cosmopolitan community. Um, and that's what keeps us going. Um, and we've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, so long, we don't quite know how long, but roughly about 900 years. Um, and, and notwithstanding that, um, our emphasis is all on the future, and which is why this, this gathering is just so important today. Um, and I know that there are a number of firsts. We are, of course, I wouldn't be doing my job if, if, I, uh, if I didn't tell you that, of course, we are the first a university in, in the English-speaking world and ranked the first as in best university in the world now, uh, in what is, of course, the only reputable ranking of global universities. Um, <laughs> but the first I was thinking about, actually, was that in, in Lady Margaret Hall, which was the first uh, college to admit women, um, uh, on this, on many other issues, uh, uh, Oxford was not first, um, but uh, we did uh, admit women to Lady Margaret Hall, and that was where... Uh, when Wild Crew was founded, it was based in LMH, in the first university-based research fellowship in wildlife conservation. So we're, we're very proud of that. Um, but as I was talking to David about this, this gathering, I realized there are a number of really exceptional facets to this gathering. Um, the first is just the extraordinary breadth and diversity of the disciplines brought together. The second is the, the remarkable caliber of the speakers, and I was lucky enough just to hear the, the last two. And the third is the um, extraordinary effort so many people have made to come here. Um, on the breadth and diversity of the disciplines brought together, um, launching a conservation geopolitics is really uh, a very exciting venue. Uh, my own work is actually, uh, venture, I should say, my own work is on, on terrorism. And so a very long time ago, I realized that in order to address the critical problems facing the world today, we cannot do that within individual intellectual silos. Our only hope of addressing these problems is if we bring together many different perspectives from many different disciplines and of people of very different backgrounds and nationalities. And this is what this, uh, this initiative is doing today. So I'm delighted to see it. At, at Oxford, we, like many universities, find so much pressure to work within disciplines. Uh, while we're observing the reality that most of the innovations are occurring at the interstices of disciplines. One of the ways we're addressing this is at the Oxford Martin School, which is designed specifically to, to bring together people from different parts of the university to address critical global issues, and I'm delighted that some of the Wild Crew events have been closely linked to the, the Martin School. The caliber of the speakers is self-evident and was evident very much this morning. But the extraordinary efforts that um, people with many other demands upon their time have made to come here really speaks to the importance of this gathering. I gather that last night Inger Andersen, only last week appointed DG 
of UNEP flew in especially to give the opening plenary. And this afternoon, Edward Mukala of UNESCO and Richard Damania of the World Bank are flying in, despite schedules which may be almost as awful as mine, uh, to participate in today's panel discussion. And then on Thursday, Mr. Rory Stewart, MP, uh, is going to dash from the House of Commons vote, whether it's a meaningful vote or a meaningless vote, we don't know, uh, but he is coming to speak at the uh, conference dinner. Um, but I also want to take uh, this opportunity to thank all those who've worked so hard to ensure that this, um, this gathering has taken place. When David started talking about uh, herding cats a moment ago, I thought he was actually giving my job description, but I, he, um, I think, was talking about the, both the work of Wild Crew and the work of just getting so many uh, people with so many other commitments here. Um, this process was begun by Mr. Tim Hodgstitz and uh, brought to fruition by Dr. Darren Burnham and her team, both of whom uh, deserve our warm thanks and I suspect a holiday too. Um, the conference is the culmination of a remarkable effort by a small but visionary team of researchers who joined David in striving to find topics beyond biology that would energize 21st century coexistence between wildlife and people. The four wild crew researchers were Dawn, whom I've just mentioned, Amy Dickman, Amy Hicks, and Ewan MacDonald, now of the Side Business School. The research was catapulted forward by the Cadas family, who endowed right here in Worcester College the first research fellowship in conservation geopolitics, and that has made this um, gathering possible. So in the course of this event, uh, we're going to start conversations that we expect will see the launch of a new phase of conservation that embraces not only everybody in this room, but more importantly, all your networks, networks and a much, much wider group of people. Um, and I do want to say this publicly, that in this phase, during this phase, Oxford University will stand solidly behind Y Crew uh, conservation. And this is a period in which conservation is no longer the preserve of a small handful of people, usually binocular, toting, booted, and bearded naturalists, very attractive as they all are and very important as their, their insights uh, are. Uh, we need to broaden uh, conservation, and this is what we see happening today. This conservation has got to be a preoccupation of every um, occupant of this planet, every man, woman, and child on this planet. David has repeatedly reminded us that conservation is about how the human enterprise is to coexist with nature in the 21st century for the well-being and indeed for the survival of all of us concerned. And we heard here this morning just some of the threats and challenges that we face. Um, so I don't quite know what conclusions will be drawn over the next couple of days. And I, I really wish I could stay and hear them all, but I do very much look forward to, to hearing uh, your conclusions and look forward to cheering on the work of this enterprise uh, over the next couple of days and indeed into the future. And with that, let me wish you uh, a very enjoyable lunch. Thank you.